fool, man. Texas has not legalized weed. Uh, we've been asking them to, and they just gave us more guns. We legalized <laughs> open carry. We were like, we just want to carry weed. They're like, how about carry a bazooka? <laughs> I was like, I don't want to. It's like, no license needed. I was like, That's a, we don't need a license. We just carry guns out in the open. But I, I like California style better. You guys were like, let's make it easier for people to smoke weed. And Texas was like, nah. Let's make it easier for people to smoke other people. <laughs> Actually, uh, a while back, I had two friends go to prison for selling drugs. And uh, don't worry, the story gets better. <laughs> Not for them, they're in prison, but for me, I got material out of it. I like it. <laughs> When drug dealers call you from prison, they always ask the same question. They're always like, who would have thought I'd go from driving to Benz to sleeping in a cell? Everybody. That's why we asked you to stop. They asked me not to talk about this stuff on stage, but the way I see it, for the next five to seven, I can say what I want. When they were dealing like small time drugs, like weed and stuff, we didn't really care. But when they started moving to heavier things, we sat down, one of our friends, and we had like a real serious talk. Like, hey man, don't go down this route. Cause uh, nobody wants to see you get, you know, locked up or, or killed. And then he started taking us out to eat to really nice restaurants. <laughs> and we were all just like, heroin's not that bad. <laughs> Nothing makes you miss your crazy ex-girlfriend like your emotionally stable girlfriend? <laughs> you ever been with somebody so mature they're boring? <laughs> I tried to start an argument with my girlfriend the other day and she said, don't worry, your feelings are valid. <laughs> I was like, fucking fight me. <laughs> Call me a loser. I want to feel alive. <laughs> Me and my girlfriend, we don't even have makeup sex. You know why we don't have makeup sex? Because we don't fucking fight, that's why. We make love like healthy, boring losers. And we schedule it too. Like if I wanna fuck on a Wednesday, she goes, how about Sunday at noon? And I go, that sounds exciting. And then she sends me a Google invite. And I click maybe. Maybe I'll show up, who knows even, you know? <laughs> I just miss all that bad shit. The other day we drove by a bar and there was a couple fighting outside. I was like, how come we don't do shit like that? <laughs> you never embarrass me in front of my friends. <laughs> Cleaned out my refrigerator yesterday, feel good about it. Yeah, I realized I've been working on the same bottle of mustard since I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this bottle's been a part of my life a long time. I don't even know if it's bad or not, because you're like, it's mustard, that's what it tastes like, I guess. <laughs> mustard's not that good. Like, we got into mustard earlier than we should have. <laughs> the guy who invented mustard invented yellow mustard, spicy mustard, Dijon mustard. Like, I want to go up to the guy like, bro, keep going, you're really close, man. <laughs> <laughs> If you ever tasted mustard and it was delicious, that's honey mustard for sure. <laughs> and honey is doing all the lifting in that relationship. <laughs> Did you guys know that mustard was initially invented to clean jewelry? Yeah, that's not true. <laughs> A complete lie. <laughs> you know why you believe that? Because you know what it tastes like. <laughs> Mustard is the only condiment that you can spill on yourself and people love to point it out and just ruin your whole day. <laughs> Ever met this person? Like, hey man, you got mustard on your shirt. It's like, oh man, have a good one. Fuck you, man. <laughs> if you ever feel lonely, you wanna make friends, put mustard on your shirt on purpose. <laughs> just walk around, people will come up to you. Like, hey man, you got mustard on your shirt. It's like, oh shit. What's your name, bro? <laughs> <laughs> If you take somebody to the movies on a first date, you're showing them that you're not confident in your conversation skills. That's why whenever I go out on a first date, I always take them to the museum. 
<laughs> museum is classy, underrated. Nobody ever sees it coming. I'm so confident in my conversation, I'm gonna try to talk to you about a painting that I don't see nothing in. <laughs> That's confidence. <laughs> my only problem with museums is I always leave there feeling like I gotta step my vocabulary up. <laughs> Be a bunch of intellectuals throwing big words around. I like taking women to the museum because I feel like it shows them a side of me that doesn't really exist. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> it's all a facade. <laughs> I learned that word at the museum. <laughs> There's a C in that word. <laughs> It'll throw you off. I was trying to sound smooth. I was like, it's a facade. <laughs> this might sound weird, but when I'm at museums, I don't, I don't really look at the paintings. I just listen to other couples and I try to pick up on new words. I'll be trying to add it to my repertoire. <laughs> it's a bougie crowd. Y'all not excited by repertoire? <laughs> I was listening to this one guy, so poetic. He was describing the painter to his day. He was like, you see how the artist rendered their emotions into every stroke of the brush? Cathartic. <laughs> I was like, yo, I can see why he's getting some. <laughs> I'm over here telling my date, you see how he colored outside of the lines? <laughs> Abstract. <laughs> As a guy, I feel like every time I go out on dates, I get forced into ordering drinks that I don't actually like. Because I'm a man, I have to make masculine choices in my drinks too. I could never enjoy myself. I always have to order whiskey. That shit is nasty. <laughs> every whiskey commercial, they say the same shit. This whiskey has been aging in a barrel for 18 years. You know what that shit tastes like? Something that sat in a barrel for 18 years. <laughs> Why are you gonna judge me as a man because I ordered a pina colada? <laughs> Shit's come with pineapples, cherries. They make songs about pina coladas. If you love pina colada, I love pina colada. <laughs> My only problem with pina coladas is I feel like they never put it in a regular cup. <laughs> they always put that shit in the curviest cup you ever seen in your life. <laughs> pina colada be looking like a bad bitch when it comes to the table. <laughs> this for you? Yeah. <laughs> From Los Angeles, I'm from West LA. Uh, I have a lot of family uh, from East LA though. And if you guys don't know, East LA uh, is known for like gang violence and drugs and guns. And um, now it's known for like white ladies that sell crystals. <laughs> so it's changed a lot. And uh, my uncle Saul, uh, who lives out there, uh, hardcore cholo from like the 90s. Like he's been in gangs, like he's been shot, he's been stabbed. Like I'm pretty sure he's never had birthday cake. Like he's had a rough life. <laughs> It's hard, dude. And he loves East LA, but here's the thing. He just got out of jail, and he's been in jail for so long that he doesn't know what gentrification is, but he still loves East LA and everything that comes to it. He's like, hey, dog, you gotta come out to East Los, dog. We got this new restaurant. It's cute as fuck. <laughs> it's $20 a plate, but it's not about the food. It's about the ambiance. <laughs> And they got these drinks, right? It's half champagne, half orange juice. They call it mimosa. <laughs> and it's bottomless, dog. You know what that means? It's forever, dude. Like, it just keeps coming. And like my dead homies, they just keep coming. <laughs> I was like, dude, are you just talking about brunch? He's like, I'll die for brunch, dog. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, fool. Get Sunday fun day blasted on my neck. <laughs> And it's funny, so he's hanging out in this like hipster area now, so every time I see him, he's like becoming more and more progressive. So like, one time I came over to his house, he's like, hey dog, what's your pronouns? I was like, Saul? <laughs> I didn't know you knew about that stuff. He's like, you gotta learn, bro, you gotta learn. <laughs> because gender is a construct. <laughs> Pero sexuality is a spectrum, fool, you know what I mean? It's like everywhere, dog. <laughs> And it makes sense, too. That's why I bang those dudes in jail. You know what I mean? Like, it makes sense to me now. It makes sense. 
Like, chicks are cool and all, but sometimes you just want the warmth of a man. You know what I mean? Like, you just chill and watch it like a Timothy Chalamet movie. You know what I mean? Like, hey, you're in Hollywood. Next time you see Timothy Chalamet, tell him Uncle Saul said, what's up, fool? Call me by your name. I'll do more than that, dog. <laughs> Break you in half. Don't throw away that peach, dude. <laughs> it's for the four people that saw that movie. <laughs> About myself, I'm, uh, I was born in Venezuela, guys. I was born there, and um, I moved to the U.S. when I was 12. Uh, so I've been living here most of my life. However, I still feel like I have like this third world country DNA in me, which I love. And that means when you come from a third world country, you're resourceful, like you solve problems quick, right? Because shit doesn't work in a third world country as they should. So you gotta find solutions in life. You just don't give up, right? Like for example, like if there's no hot water, heat it up. <laughs> There's no manager, okay? <laughs> You're the manager. <laughs> and you're always gonna find somebody who's gonna help you in a third world country, and they're always gonna say something like, let's see what I can do. Like, that's the phrase. And that's everywhere, because the other day I was at this bar, and the bartender was Cuban, and my girlfriend wanted a Diet Coke. So I go and talk to the bartender in Spanish, I was like, hey bro, can I get a Diet Coke? And the bartender realized that I was from Venezuela, so he's like, hey bro, uh, so we don't have Diet Coke but uh, what I can do <laughs> is that I can give you some regular Coke and put some water on it. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said that. Because that's the mindset, you see? Because like he, he didn't go like, we don't have it. He's like, no, we're going to come up with a solution here. <laughs> we're going to solve this problem, okay? <laughs> Which, by the way, I would love to see this guy as a doctor just doing the same thing, right? Uh, so welcome. Uh, so you need a blood transfusion. So uh, your blood type is uh, A positive. Uh, we don't have that. <laughs> but what I can do <laughs> is that I can give you some A negative and then add some B negative because two negatives make a positive, puppy. <laughs> Thank you for the one plus. Uh, <laughs> Funny, I like comparing doctors. There, I like going doctors. The other day I went to a chiropractor. Uh, I didn't like it. I feel chiropractors, they enjoy their job a little too much, <laughs> right? Like they like to comment every time they crack your back, which I didn't know, right? It's so weird, like there, I was there, and the guy's like, all right, I'm gonna get behind you and close. I was like, okay, cool. He's like, all right, one, two, three. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh, you're tight. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, I feel your penis right now, man. <laughs> Who's cracking who? 